вчера ночью. Вы знаете, что это выступление было, да? Поэтому я сейчас буду чуть-чуть потише сделать, чтобы у меня голова не сбоялась. Вы слушаете всех людей. Спасибо, Сэй. Did, uh, did everybody enjoy the party yesterday? Yeah. I enjoyed it maybe a little bit too much. But um, let's just uh, help, me, help me get through this today, people. So thank you. Uh, today I'm going to talk about, um, I don't really have a great name for this topic yet. This is the first time I'm giving this talk. Um, let's just call it hybrid migration or, or something like that. So it's about migrating Angular JS applications or Angular 1 applications to Angular. Um, I've spoken about this topic quite a lot. Uh, ng-conf, uh, Angular up. I do a workshop on it. I spoke at uh, Barcelona recently and I've done a whole bunch of meetups. I don't know how I became an, uh, uh, an expert on migration, but I, I seem to be an expert these days. Um, and you can imagine, I, I kind of got a little bit sick of talking about migration. I've both spoken about it a lot. And, and not because I don't think it's an interesting topic. I think it's an interesting topic and I think it's an important topic. But the problem is that every time I give one of these presentations and one of my own workshops, I get people who come up to me afterwards who are just really frustrated about uh, the migration approach, which the, uh, the official migration approach, and, and how it doesn't really help them with their use case, their exact use case. Um, and I've worked with clients as well where we try to use the official migration strategy and it does have problems. So I tried to come up with another way. Um, I'm going to show you an alternative solution today, one that works all the time, pretty certain it will work all the time for every type of application that you can imagine. And even it's really, really badly architected application. I have a solution for you. So those of you sitting in the audience with Angu AngularJS, who, who here in the audience does have an AngularJS application right now? Okay, good, good, good number there. So no matter what, I'm gonna give you a solution which will help you migrate to Angular. Okay, so you should be happy. Um, and I'm not too sure what to call this approach at all. Any help, I'd be much appreciated. I think the title for this talk was Your Last Desperate Attempt to AngularJS Migration. Um, and I've also called it Bulletproof Migration. I'm just giving this talk at Angular Connect in two weeks, and I think I called it From Donkey to Unicorn. So I, I'm not very good with names. So if someone after has got a good name for this talk, then let me know. Um, and for those of you who weren't here yesterday, my name's Asim Hussain. On Twitter, you can find me at Jawache. I blog about Angular and JavaScript at CodeCraft.tv. And I'm also a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft on the, well, on the cloud team, so on the Jour platform. So if you've got any questions or issues or just thoughts or feedback about Azure, come speak to me. The PM team constantly wants me to give them feedback from the developer community about Azure. So if you've used Azure and you have something good to say about it or even something bad to say about it, come find me. Um, that's actually my job. So um, please help me do my job. So what we're going to talk about today, I'm going to give you an overview of the AngularJS migration, migration strategy, the official one. Uh, I have a, a migration of five minutes that I'll explain. Then I'm going to talk about why, the two reasons why I think most migrations fail. I do honestly believe that most migrations fail. And then I'm going to show you this amazing secret solution that I'm going to explain in a second. Um, so let's do it. Let's do migration in five minutes. Okay. So just some terminology. Angular, I'll talk about Angular 4 very soon, maybe even today, is going to be Angular 5. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Angular JS is Angular the one dot X branch. You can think of them as completely different frameworks. Um, to help colorblind people, because um, they're both the colors are the same. When you see blue, it's the new Angular. When you see red, it's the old Angular. 
I'm supposed to have been given lots of guidance and feedback by the Angular team that I'm never ever supposed to say Angular 1 and uh, Angular 4. But for the purposes of this migration, of this talk, I find it a lot easier. So sometimes I will say Angular 1 and Angular 4. So just as an example, this is maybe an application that you have. You have different entities. Okay, so regardless of what web framework you use these days, Angular or React or Vue, we're all kind of aware of this concept of components. These are different components or entities in an application. We might have a list, uh, different cards, or spinners, services and resources and different components here as well. So you imagine you've broken down your application as a tree of different entities. With the official AngularJS migration approach, what they've built, and it's amazing what they have built, is called the upgrade module. And what you can do is basically bootstrap an Angular application with both frameworks at the same time, at exactly the same time, okay? So that means what you then do is you take one entity at a, at a time and you rewrite it as Angular 4. So all this stuff is written in, in AngularJS, you take one component, one class maybe, and you rewrite that as Angular 4. Now the down arrow is because you have to, you, you, you create it, you create an Angular 4 component and you downgrade it so it can be used in an Angular JS component. You can do it that way. So my advice is always to start the leaves because it's just easier. So you start the leaves, you rewrite it to Angular 4, downgrade it so it can be used in your Angular JS entity, then do the next one. So now you've uh, rewrite this as Angular 4, downgrade it so it can be used in Angular JS. But now this, because it's only being used by Angular 4, you don't need to downgrade it anymore. So now this is pure Angular 4. And that, I describe this as like a disease. You infect your Angular JS application with Angular, and then you let it spread. And you slowly spread through your application until eventually all you've got is Angular 4, and then you just uh, drop AngularJS and now you have an Angular 4 application. Okay? That is the uh, approach, if you go to the Angular Docs website, that's the approach that's recommended. Um, and it does work, right? It does work. Um, and it's, it's a technical marvel. No, nobody else has ever come up with something like this to help people move from one framework to another framework. But, so, why then do migrations fail? Okay, well, what are the problems with this approach? Did that animate? Yeah, I like my animations. Um, so the two biggest reasons I think migrations fail, from my experiences, is I call it other baggage. Okay, there's always other baggage to deal with. I will explain this in a second. And something I call cleaning house. And I'm going to explain both of these concepts in a second, okay? So other baggage. There's always other baggage to deal with, okay? When you're migrating AngularJS to Angular, you're not just migrating AngularJS to Angular, you probably want to upgrade a whole bunch of other things from your old version to your new version. Um, but in the hybrid, uh, in the, Angular, the official AngularJS migration strategy, we're creating one hybrid application one JavaScript application, okay? It's one, it's not two. Um, and then slowly over time, we migrate each component from AngularJS to Angular. But then how do you deal with all of the other dozens of third-party libraries that you're using? Um, what happens when they get merged into hybrid mode? Well, nothing happens. You still have to use the same third-party modules. Let me show you an example. Okay, so imagine you've got your AngularJS application. I think this is a very common use case, actually. Um, and with the AngularJS application, when you, you want to migrate it to Angular 4, but your AngularJS application is using Bootstrap 2.3.2. Who uses Bootstrap? Yeah, we're all using Bootstrap. I know, okay, I know, it's helpful. Well, we wrote our AngularJS application with Bootstrap 2, because when we were writing our AngularJS applications, Bootstrap 2 was probably the latest version, right? So then what do you do? Right? What do you do when you want to make migrate to Angular 4? Well, by default, all that happens is you end up using Angular 4 
with Bootstrap 2. Right? So then you've, you've gone through this whole process of building a brand new application with a modern web framework with Bootstrap 2. Right? It just feels horrible. Um, so then what are the alternatives? What can you do? Well, one thing you can do is, while you still have an AngularJS application, upgrade to Bootstrap 4. Right? And then when you migrate to Angular 4, you then have an Bootstrap 4 and Angular 4 application. But that's just a lot of, you just, all of your templates, everything you upgraded in your AngularJS application to Bootstrap 4, all of that work is now thrown away. It's a lot of work to go through, right? Just to, just to get to uh, a Bootstrap 4 with Angular 4, right? What you really want to do is this, okay? We want an AngularJS application which has Bootstrap 2.3.2 and then when we migrate to Angular 4, at the same time we want to migrate to Bootstrap 4. We want to do that with everything. This is going to have dozens of third-party modules, right? And as we migrate those third-party party, as we migrate AngularJS to Angular 4, we want to migrate those third-party modules. We want to use the latest versions of those. But how do you do that? But with the official approach, we can't. We have to kind of stick to the old versions or rewrite everything. So the other thing you do, I, I call it cleaning house. So um, uh, we, have a, we, have a, we have a cleaner who comes, uh, helps uh, clean our house. But my wife always cleans the house before the cleaner comes. Right? Which I always thought, why are you cleaning the house before the cleaner comes? But um, like, this is what we basically end up having to do, right? When AngularJS first came out, we, we had no idea how to architect a good AngularJS application. We had no idea, okay? Uh, there was no advice, there was no style guide, there was nothing. Okay, so we ended up building AngularJS applications that probably weren't very good, right? Um, we used controllers instead of components. We used scope inheritance instead of controller as. Uh, we probably used scope.watch so much. And emit and broadcast. We used all of these things which we now know to be bad architecture. So basically there's a lot of AngularJS applications out there with not a great architecture. But if you were to build an AngularJS application today with everything we now know about building a good AngularJS application, that's where you have to be before you even start the process of migrating to Angular 4, right? You have to have a really, really, really well-architected AngularJS application. Then migrating to Angular 4 is easy. Um, but like a lot of us, our AngularJS applications are usually very complex. They've had years and years and years of development and investment. Um, it takes like a day of miracle coding kung fu to like implement a feature. So asking, asking somebody to like refactor the whole thing to meet modern standards before you migrate, you know, it's like, come on, be serious, right? Um, so that's where people often think, okay, well fine, if, it's, it's gonna, if I have to put all of this effort to refactor it to the modern Angular, to a modern Angular JS application, I might as well rewrite it. I might as well rewrite it from scratch in Angular or Vue or React, whatever, right? I might as well just rewrite it. Who's, who here with an Angular JS application has argued for a rewrite? There you go, a couple of hands up, right? So, as I promised, there's a solution. It's not the simplest, um, it might not be the easiest. Uh, I consider it like halfway between a rewrite and a migration. And I didn't come up with this solution myself, actually. Before I joined Microsoft, I was working at a company. And I was helping them migrate to Angular. We spent like six months. It took a long time. Um, and then my, I, we hired a replacement. And he came in. And I, and I showed him this wonderful work I'd done for like six months to prepare this application. I got it. It was in hybrid mode. It was running. It was good. And he just looked at it for like a few minutes and then just went, why don't you just use an iframe? And I was like, an iframe? <laughs> an iframe? 
I remember iframes. Like, I'm old. I remember using iframes when they first came out. They were like, cool. The iframes are not cool anymore, right? Um, this is how I felt. But then, like, after I thought about it for a little bit, I was like, actually, that's a, that's a really good idea. Um, and so that's the solution, right? The solution is um, to use iframes. Hang on. Um, and I've got to just, just need to be clear. I only use this if your AngularJS application has a poor architecture or you're not an SPA. This is also something that can help you move from a server-side rendered application to an SPA step by step. Or you've just got a lot of third-party modules that you don't know what to do with, right? If, you've, if this is you, then this is a really good solution. I'll, I'll show you now. You're going to be really... Uh, amazed at how complicated this is. So you have an Angular, a modern Angular SPA application. This is your host application. And then when you need to show, um, uh, and then basically we, we iframe in your legacy Angular JS application. That's it. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Actually, as you can guess, it's probably a little bit more complicated than that, right? But I do have solutions for you. And what we do is we migrate our legacy AngularJS application one root at a time, one URL at a time from AngularJS to Angular. Um, let me show you a demo. OK, I have to do some magic here. And then this is the, okay. So this is the legacy application that I'm showing you on the page, okay. So all these links and everything is going to be available after. So this is the legacy application. So you can see it's running Bootstrap. Well, you have to trust me, I wrote Bootstrap 2.3.2. If, if you know Bootstrap, you can recognize this is Bootstrap 2, yeah. And this is running AngularJS 1.6, okay. Um, and hopefully, if I get this keyboard shortcut, yes, you can see its URL is slash legacy, yeah? And then what I've done here is I have a modern Angular application which is running Bootstrap 4 and Angular 4, okay? And you can see from its URL, it's not legacy, yeah? And so now, when we want to render the AngularJS application, we can just... Hopefully, yes. So now we're, it's loading in the, I framed in the legacy application. And now when I click the legacy application for Angular, it now takes us back to modern Angular. Yeah? Hopefully that's a little bit clear. And that's basically the magic. Now the other thing it does is, um, is is sharing state. So this is a very, very simple example. So you click the number, it increases. This is a legacy application, remember? A completely separate application, completely separate. But then, if you look in Angular, it still has the same number, yeah? So that, that number value is being shared between two separate applications, and we have like a reset button, okay? So there's a couple of concepts here. Let me explain what they are and what's going on. All right, so there's two, there's basically there's two core concepts. There's something called root ownership and something, well, you, you saw an example of it, sharing state, yeah? So let's first talk about root ownership. So some roots are going to be owned by the Angular application and some roots are going to be owned by the Angular JS application. Um, as you migrate your application, you move these roots from one to the other. So let me show you. So at the start, the very, very start, the top level, the home, is going to be owned by Angular. Everything else in your application is just well, still your old Angular JS application. Yeah? And then you just move it one root at a time. A whole page you move one at a time from Angular JS to Angular. And then eventually everything is on Angular and you just have an Angular application. Right? Um, 
but what 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 we need to deal with is basically the router so in angular js i'm using the ui router yeah and in angular we have the angular router so what we're basically doing is we're moving routes that used to exist in the angular js router over to the angular router yeah um, but the question is who owns the root? Does the root go in here or does the root go in here? Which one does it go into? So to show that I have basically, there's basically four different use cases, okay? One, if you made a click in the AngularJS application and that click would take you to an AngularJS page, you don't need to do anything. It stays in AngularJS application. If you made a click in the Angular application, and then that click would show another Angular application, there's nothing you need to do. It stays in the Angular router. Did I say Angular JS? I think I might have said Angular JS. Okay, it stays in the, the modern Angular router. The question is this one. This is the complicated one. You make a click in Angular JS, in Angular, and then that the URL you want to go to is actually owned by the legacy application. So how do you do this? Code. Go time. I never do live demos, so this is a very rare occasion. So, what we have is um, in the Angular application, we have uh, the router, and you can see here at the bottom we have what's called a fallback route, yeah? So if the path matches this, it will, um, well, it will redirect. If the path matches this, it will implement the counter component. If, the, if, none, if the URL doesn't match any of these, it will implement this fallback route. See the path, star, star? And that fallback route is inserting this thing called an iframe component. And the iframe component, if you look at it, it's pretty simple. It just has an iframe, you set the source to be a URL. Um, I've got just some very, very simple CSS so that this iframe takes up the full size of the page. Yeah? And then the code itself is this. So this is the iframe component. And then um, we basically grab the URL that we want. We generate uh, a legacy URL. And who, who was here yesterday for my security talk? <laughs> yeah, a lot of you, OK. This is what I was talking about yesterday when um, this, this is kind of untrusted import, right? So Angular, by default, would sanitize this. So if I actually tried to stick that URL in the iframe source, you would get nothing. They'd just strip it all out. So in Angular, you have to actually bypass security trusted resource URL. You have to call that to make that URL um, embeddable in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the parameter. And so basically, when you request the URL, um, what it does, so this is the application, so this is Angular. When I request this AngularJS, what it's doing, if we inspect the element, what am I doing? So, you can see here, it's implementing the iframe component, and that's just iframing in the old legacy application, yeah? If we just click on normal Angular, we're just showing the Angular component. So it's just components. It's all an Angular application, and if you click select the old one, it, it adds a component which iframes in the old legacy application. Right? Okay. So let's do... So 
that was one example. But what about the other one? What about if you're in an AngularJS application and you click a link and that link you've migrated now to Angular, how do you show the Angular application? Right? What do you do? You can't. The AngularJS application is an iframe. How does it tell the parent iframe to navigate to a root? So again, you're going to have some code. Right, so this one's a little bit different. Yep. So if I now go to the Angular, this that was the Ang Angular application. If I now go to the Angular JS application here, and I show you the router again. So this is the same as you saw before, and this is just an Angular JS router. That's one URL. When you get to that URL, load up this template and implement this controller. This is the fallback code. So if none of the URLs match execute this code and we get the path and then we use this thing called parent when you when you when you are loaded as an iframe parent becomes available in your globals which is a reference to the parent iframe okay so that's your angular application and you tell the angular application post you can pass it messages so we're passing it the path and this is actually, a, and I, and I give talks on security, this is a, a security hole, so um, you're supposed to pass in uh, the, the domain name that you're going to pass to to, to, um, to, 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 to not expose a, 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 a hole, so don't, don't use this in production, but it's good for demoing. So basically, in the AngularJS application, you click a link, the AngularJS application has no idea how to handle this link, it thinks, okay, maybe the Angular application could handle this link, and then basically uses a post message to pass it a message. And then in the Angular application, we basically listen. So if we look here at the end where we set up the iframe component, we listen for fallback routing events. And this is, don't be scared of this, this is just a, a cross browser safe way of listening to an event. So I listen for the message event. If it has a navigate to property, I then get the URL. And then I call router navigate by URL to the URL. And that's it. So in the Angular, if you request a URL in the AngularJS application, AngularJS doesn't know how to handle it. It will post the message to the Angular application. The Angular application will capture it here and then nav navigate by URL. Okay. Okay, so that was um, how to deal with different routes. I can tell from the audience that I think I might have lost a few people here right now. That is kind of a, a lot more complicated to understand. If you are interested in this, check out my blog post. You have to probably go through it a couple of times and look at the source code. But basically, the whole idea is how do you make, uh, how do you move routes from Angular to Angular, AngularJS to Angular in a way in which you can keep it all in one, in one application. But the other problem is sharing state. How do we share state? These are two completely separate applications. How do they share data, right? And there's a couple of little tricks. That you, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Um, I think a really simple way of doing this is to keep both of the applications on the same domain, right? You could have had the completely different domains, like legacy.asimsapp.com and asimsapp.com, right? Um, or that's, that would actually work, but two completely different domains. I recommend keep, keeping on one domain because then cookies are shared between the domains. So if you log in in your AngularJS application, you will still be logged in in your Angular application. And also, if you use the same domain, then uh, you can use local storage. Local storage is then shared between the two different applications. And also, with local storage, you can do something called storage events. Who here knows about storage events? Ah, okay, fairly large number of you. I didn't know about storage events until this, so this is quite exciting for me. Um, so let me show you how that works. Let me show you how we're sharing the state between those two different applications. OK, 
Okay, so let's first take a look at the counter component, which is the, 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 the counter that you see on the bottom of the page. So in Angular, the modern Angular, when we, oh, let me sh take, show the uh, HTML. Yeah, so that's the counter. When we click it, when we click the number, we call increment. And when we click reset, we call the reset function. So this is the increment function. So I just increment the counter. And every time I do that, I call local storage, set item, counter, and then the value. Yeah? And the same with reset. I just reset it to zero. And then uh, the same thing happens on the AngularJS application. So you can see here, it's just an AngularJS code. We call increment scope, increment the counter, and just use local storage set item again. They're both doing exactly the same thing. But the cool thing about local storage is, is that as long as everything's running on the same domain, um, I don't think on the same uh, application uh, browser, um, you can. It sends out storage events, okay, which is here. So every time you save something to local storage, it sends out a storage event. So you can listen to it here, get the key, which is the key you're storing, and then just get the value and store it, get wherever you want from it, which is pretty useful, so across tabs as well, right? So if you've got the same application on the same domain across five different tabs, you can synchronize data across all the tabs. Um, but now we've got, we can also do it by communicating through an iframe. And that's it. So that was it, basically. Um, that was how I uh, um, uh, uh, created this solution. Um, in summary, migrating using the upgrade module, which is the official approach, uh, doesn't fix your architecture. You still have to have all of those same crappy old legacy third-party modules that you had before, right? Um, Rewriting might be a solution for you, but it takes a lot, a lot of time and it has a lot of risk. And this solution is, I consider it a bit in the middle, okay, iframe migration, so it's kind of half like a rewrite and half like a migration. If you want to find out more information, I recommend just going to my website, codecraft.tv, and if you look on my blog, there's a link to uh, details about this method. And um, again, if you want to... Uh, Follow me on Twitter, I'll be posting out slides later on, and the slides have the links that I described earlier on. And that's it, thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any questions? Hey Casey, uh, the word in Russian. The tip of our study is of course upon Gulara. This is the first time we have a topic on the topic. We have friends. Сами Zoom, которые занимаются онлайн образованием, это стартап, пошедший из Амстердама. Они очень любят JS, поэтому завели себе школу в Харькове и проводят метапы по ангуляру. Следующий будет в пятницу. В эту пятницу здесь же будет метап по ангуляру. Здесь сидит Степан Суворов в первом ряду. Если у кого-то есть вопросы. Если у кого-то есть вопросы, либо предложения, либо что-то. Или, либо кому-то еще нужны блокнотики, у него времени есть, можете подходить к нему. Вот. А, Асим Хусейн сейчас пойдет вместе с Максимом Клиничным на зеленый стейдж, на Speaking Corner. Там вы сможете задать ему еще вопросы. Сейчас у нас есть время для вопросов, ровно 10 минут. Через 10 минут Япал и Палеофильтр будут проводить розыгрыш. Поэтому 10 минут на вопросы, идем получать призывы Япал и Палеофильтр и следующий модель главы. Oh. Thank you for this great talk. The question is, if the immigration from Angular to yes, from Angular to, let's say, it will do like a couple months, <laughs> isn't it the same to migrate to another one framework like Rila? Especially if you already using Redux in your application. Is this still recording or is this uh
This recording. It is. Oh, no, it's not. Well, yes, I mean, um, so the question is that if it's going to take you a couple of months to migrate, why not rewrite to another framework? It's the same amount of time all it could be less or because Because Angular is such a different framework to AngularJS, yeah. Um, I think that uh, it depends on your, it depends on maybe. Honestly, maybe, right, you, you, you're right. Sometimes if, it depends where you're starting from, right? If your AngularJS application is already using components, you're on Angular 1.6, maybe you're already using Bootstrap 4, whatever, right? If you're pretty close up on the high level of, high bar of a really good AngularJS application, well, actually, to be honest with you, a lot of clients, once, once they go through the process of migrating from AngularJS to Angular, they, they bring their AngularJS application up to such a high standard that they're like, we're happy. Because actually, a, a good AngularJS application feels like a, a, a view application. It feels pretty, it's the same, right? So they might just stop there. Um, but if you are coming from somewhere so far away, right? So far away, you're using scope watches everywhere, everything's very complicated, and yeah, it might a rewrite into another framework. Maybe that is the right solution for you. But before you do that, try this. Right? But then, uh, when AngularJS is already using Redux, it, and it's already using component architecture, yeah. it's very close to React or uh, any other framework uh, yeah. platform. Yeah. And it seems like what we can Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, if you're using, I'm honest, if you're using Redux, uh, AngularJS with components, well, well, you're living a good life. That's a pretty good architecture. I mean, why do you want to move? Seriously, seriously, why do you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should just leave the question. Uh, so, thanks for the talk. But I had a very big issue to do it because just a few weeks ago I had a presentation from a journal in my company where I showed how to migrate from legacy prototype GS stages to some, let's say, view. Oh, proto you mean prototype? prototype. Proto I, 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 had to deal, I had to deal with prototype recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's so horrible that you cannot use uh, other frameworks. And it uses the dollar sign, so yeah. you're, you're screwed if you're using yeah. jQuery. Yeah. It, it, it overrides prototype. Yeah. So, yeah. And one of the decisions was to just try iframe. And I'm yeah. just saying that you showed it actually that the last slide was like a general approach for migrating from but we can combine those two together from whatever to whatever. And so yeah, just you can generalize it like an approach to migration. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what I think that the, the cat's out of the bag. The, the, this talk is is gonna morph into a. Um, I hope this isn't recording. This talk is gonna morph into a talk. I think I'm gonna call migrate anything because actually this technique, if you think about it. I think the gentleman here has, has, has nailed it. You can migrate from anything to anything. I just showed you how to migrate from AngularJS to Angular. You could do AngularJS to Vue. You could do Vue to React. Or what probably is a lot more worrying to a lot of people, React to Vue, right? So yeah, I think this is an interest. I think I like this approach because, and, and I think it's, I think right now is, and I, and I know that I, I get a lot of, Topics about this like Angular JS versus Angular versus Vue versus React, which is the winner? We're all winners, right? I heard a great uh, uh, statement the other day, which I thought was really inspiring, and it was we were it was talking about the community that we're in, the JavaScript community that we're in, right? And they described it as the mind share of JavaScript developers is so big, which I translated to our world is so big. We can have three frameworks. We can. There's so many people out there doing JavaScript. We can have three frameworks that are massive, that are successful, that are being used for whatever reasons, and it's fine. It's fine. So 
And I wanted to come up with a way where people wouldn't be so afraid to pick one framework over another one. So don't be afraid to pick Vue because you can flip from Vue to React if you want in the future. Uh, is, my, is my point, right? That's what I want to get, get to. Yeah, I just to get sense for that talk because I, so it shows you that you can actually, you, you have the technical way of uh, dealing with technical values. <laughs> yeah, so, and you can rewrite your legacy in garbage and you don't have actually excuse except your PMs don't give you a time. Yeah. So, yeah. Technically, you can, you just show it. Use those techniques, it's possible for everyone. Cool. Anything else? Oh, hey. This is the, he, he's one of the guys who, who inspired me actually to think about this solution, so thank you very much. Yeah, and I'm pretty happy that you are continuing the research, yeah. and it's pretty possible that we will use some practices in our project that is huge. And the real question about migration and about using this technique mm -hmm. is maybe you have some also recipe about uh, we have a lot of modal dialogues in, in red, in your JS. Mo mo modal, the dialogues. The dialogues. Yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, it should be out of high frame. What would you recommend to do with it? Oh, um, there's the whole thing because the iframe is like usually in the middle and you have to scroll inside it. I think the only solution I found was just to make the iframe the full page. And then if the modal dialog shows up, it's, oh, in, if, you're, if you're in AngularJS and you want to show an Angular modal, yeah. that's a, I have no idea. That's a good, that's a good question. Uh, Z index? Z index 1000? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I hope that you already have a solution for that. I don't have a solution for that one yet. Okay, thank you. Oh. Uh, what did you drink last night? <laughs> I drank, um, I'm not too sure. Uh, they make some very, very nice old fashions in the bar downstairs. And, um, yeah, which I recommend. <laughs> Who wins the developers in the React and what you personally like in Angular oh. that you give the developers the concept of Angular? Like what, what, what do I think is a, is a good what framework? What do you like in Angular framework? Oh, Angular framework. Oh, um, I, I mean, I know I've, I've been working with Angular a long time. The, the, the advantages I think of Angular framework are probably not what people think, right? I think it's a I think it's a great framework for the future. Everything that's in the Angular framework is being targeted towards a, a, a modern way of building applications. It's quite frustrating for a lot of people because you can only build an SPA with Angular, but actually in the future, five years down the line, all we're going to be building is SPAs, right? So Angular is a, is a framework targeted for the future. React and Vue, I think, are good frameworks and they're targeted for now, right? Um, other reasons I like, I like Angular are because um, I've worked in large enterprise companies and that one thing that's really nice about Angular is that one Angular developer is the same as another Angular developer, right? It's quite nice. You can, ha you can hire like five Angular developers in your team. They can all just start jumping in on any project because every project looks exactly the same. So it's really good for that reason. Um, and they have... The the versioning is really clear and easy to understand. Like we know what's happening. Five, six, seven, eight, the deprecation policy. Um, I really like a lot of those features of Angular. And I think, uh, what is the future gonna be for web applications? The future is gonna be SPAs with isomorphic rendering, uh, served off static websites with serverless technology backing your API, right? And Angular is, 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 is prime for that, right, for the future. So, yeah. All right, thank you. So, I see we'll go now to the green stage, to speaker corner, and you can go green coffee, take your private from the other field.